Yeah, welcome Math 13 students. Tonight we're going to go ahead and take a look at the material in uh, section 12.1. We're going to compare uh, three or more populations, uh, test claims about three populations, and uh, we're going to learn about a new distribution and uh, a new method of testing. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And we shall begin. All right. <clears throat> Chapter 12, section one, one way a nova. <clears throat> now, a bit of an outline. Oh, let me come back over here. Uh, one way a nova. I'll explain what the acronym means uh, in just a moment. <clears throat> but this is the uh, very, this is really the very last topic we cover this semester. So a bit of an outline. In this presentation, we are going to take care of the following. We're going to introduce the ANOVA test, and we're going to conduct an ANOVA test. <clears throat> now, let me give you the definition for ANOVA. <clears throat> this is what we call the one-way analysis of variance. It's that analysis of variance that gives us the acronym ANOVA. There's a couple different flavors of ANOVA. There's a one-way ANOVA, there's a two-way ANOVA. Uh, we just look at the one-way ANOVA this semester. <clears throat> and this uh, one-way ANOVA test or analysis of variance is a method of testing the equality of three or more population means by analyzing their uh, sample variances. <clears throat> Notice we're going to test equality of three or more population means. <clears throat> so it's really kind of set up as a statement you might see as a null hypothesis. <clears throat> Our objective here, <clears throat> we really do uh, wish to compare three or more populations in many cases. Uh, the world is complicated. It's really not always just us versus them. So <clears throat> having a way to test claims about multiple populations is really uh, uh, the next logical step here. <clears throat> and it's a straightforward goal. We're going to use samples from three or more populations to test claims of equal means. There are requirements. You must be at least this tall to ride this ride. <clears throat> uh, the populations involved must be approximately normally distributed over the variable of interest. <clears throat> the population should also have approximately equal variances. These first two requirements are not super strict. Uh, the test can, can tolerate some deviation, uh, but not on the lot. We need simple random samples. <clears throat> and because we are gathering multiple samples from different populations, we want to make sure the samples are independent samples, very much in the vein of section 92 when we were testing claims about population means using independent samples. That's where there is no direct connection or relationship between uh, sample elements. <clears throat> then the data has to be categorized in a single way. All that really means is we gotta be looking at something like age in all of the samples or speed in all of the samples, or number of units in all of the samples. It's just got to be consistent, <clears throat> that variable of interest. <clears throat> now let's talk for a moment about the hypotheses. <clears throat> the, null hypo <clears throat> excuse me, the null hypothesis is going to assume equal means, while the alternative hypothesis will assume a difference. <clears throat> so, really, how does this look when we try to notate? <clears throat> the null hypothesis will look like mean number one, mean number two equals mean number three equals however many means we might have. 
Now I'll remind you, because we are looking at a population or several here, <clears throat> we use the appropriate notation, the mu. <clears throat> The alternative hypothesis is that at least one is different. <clears throat> now, fortunately, there is some technology that goes along with this. <clears throat> the formulas are somewhat similar to the formulas we saw back in 10.1 uh, and 10.2. They're rather large and cumbersome. I don't even bother placing them into my presentations, <clears throat> even if we were meeting face to face. I just reference them uh, in the text. Oh, I might put a quick picture up on the overhead, but that would have been it. <clears throat> Our TI-84 has the capability of conducting one of these ANOVA tests, and it really does quite a good job. <clears throat> The uh, test is just labeled A Nova, and there's a little open parenthesis, <clears throat> and we'll need to give it some detail there on how to input our data uh, with the correct syntax. But uh, you've used some of this before. <clears throat> and the other yearly unique thing about this particular section is that it works almost exclusively with raw sample data. I'm not going to have X bar, S, and N for my individual samples. What I will have are individual scores. <clears throat> so as we say, the test uses sample data from multiple lists. And because our calculator is going to do the calculation for us, we have a p-value here. Now, the distribution we use, and again, I don't make a real big deal out of this distribution at this point in the semester, but it's called the F distribution, and it shares a lot of similarities to uh, the uh, chi-square distribution. And that's really all I'll say about it. You can take a look at it in the text. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's our first example, and I think only one too. As I say, it's pretty straightforward. So assessing student outcomes, it's important to consider student subpopulations. We actually do this at heart now. We try to figure out what students are doing for things like how many hours a week, how many students are doing CTE, how many students are doing transfer. <clears throat> All these things come, uh, come up at heart now. So this particular type of question is very, very realistic, <clears throat> at least, uh, at least uh, in my world. <clears throat> so in assessing student outcomes, it is important to consider student subpopulations. Students who take morning classes may differ from those that take evening classes. We are going to use the given data to test the claim that the classes come from populations with equal means. And there is my data set. So this is the one place in the semester we see data sets that are a little bit longer than we've seen or had to interact with so far. Uh, but again, this is really about as long and, and ugly as they get. I think they're a little bit shorter on our uh, final exam. <clears throat> you will see this material. So there we go. That's the data. We have class one, class two, and class three. <clears throat> and uh, we have, uh, looks like uh, exam scores here. So we're going to use the given data to test the claim that classes come from populations with equal means. <clears throat> the null hypothesis, three samples from three populations, we assume that they all are equal. The null hypothesis looks similar to what we've seen before. The alternative hypothesis is completely different. At least one is different. It could be that two are the same and the third one is the odd one out. It could be that all three are the same. It could be <clears throat> that only one out of those is different and two are the same. Could be all three are different. There's any number of possibilities, and I'll talk about those 
when we get to the end of the example. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and find a P value. Oh, there it is. Let me make them go away first. I'm going to stop my sharing and jump over to my other computer, or my, not my other computer, my TI. Where are you? There you are. All right. So um, I did things a little bit different tonight. I went ahead and preloaded the data into the TI uh, 83, excuse me, 84. And now I'm ready to go ahead and conduct my test of hypothesis. You'll note we've got three distinctly different lists, list one, list two, list three. Those do contain the data set we just saw. <clears throat> I'll point out that if we go down into the basement of statistics, way down, way, way, ah, that's the very last one. Now I'm back at the beginning again. So <clears throat> the very last test that we work with is the ANOVA test. Now I need to input my data sets. So this is where I'm going to need to remember to use my comma key to separate my list. Sample one was in list one, comma. Sample two was in list two, comma. Sample three was in list three. Close up the parenthesis. And at that point, all I need to do is to hit enter. And a couple of things here before I actually get to the p-value. Um, you'll note that there's a bunch of stuff here. And um, this is what I, was me what I mean about uh, this particular test opening up a completely different window uh, onto uh, statistics. This is going to involve analyzing sample variances as opposed to sample means as a way to address the question. So, and up at the very top, we have our test statistic. You see the letter F. It's because we use the F distribution here, not the, uh, not the uh, T distribution, not the Z distribution, not the chi-square distribution, but the F distribution. <clears throat> This one is actually really rather interesting, and I'll just talk about it for a moment, and then I'll pull out the p-value there. Um, it's really constructed from, and I won't really call them simple, uh, simple fractions, but your test statistic is basically a simple fraction. And if the numerator and denominator get far enough out of whack, we reject the null hypothesis. If the numerator and the denominator uh, <clears throat> run around close to each other and don't change through the course of a bunch of analysis, then we don't uh, reject the null, we keep it. <clears throat> now, back to the question at hand, I see a p-value here of 0 0.005485, so 00549, <clears throat> and that's it. That's my p-value. Um, now we just go back to, <clears throat> finishing off the process. There's my p-value, 0.00549. I'll compare that to an alpha of 0.05. We're going to reject the null hypothesis. <clears throat> so that's going to mean at least one of those three means is different from the others. And maybe all three are different from each other, but at least one is different from the others. Our initial claim is not supported in this case at the alpha equals 0 0.05 level because our initial claim was the null hypothesis and we rejected that notion. <clears throat> and again, you're going to note the usual five steps that you see there uh, for a test of hypothesis. That doesn't really change. <clears throat> oh, you do a bunch of the stuff, you might get cheeky and minimize some of the steps, but, uh, but that's really about it. Now, there are some considerations. The ANOVA test may not identify means as being different. The test does not distinguish which population mean or means may be different further analysis is required. So let me jump back to my other calculator screen for a moment. 
and we'll talk about that. So <clears throat> if I take a look at my data, I have three distinctly different lists. And the only real way to test is to actually do pairwise t-test. So I can go ahead and say stat test. I'll do a t-test. I've got data. And in my first, oh, excuse me, that's the wrong test. Two sample t-test, there we go. Um, I have data in list one and list two. We do not pool. Uh, we're going to test for not equal. That's the flip side of equal. And we're gonna look at the p-value. Point uh, 0 0.03, so the, the first two populations are not equal to each other. And what I need to do is to mix that up. So I can go back over to tests, back to the two sample t-test. This time I'll compare list one to list three. Two-tailed test. Ah, there's a p-value of 0 0.28. So population one and population three, <clears throat> let's say three or two. Oh, okay, but two is three here, Duh, my bad. Um, <clears throat> they are very similar. The last thing I'll test is the populations uh, for two and three. So if I go back there one more time, <clears throat> Second list two, second list three. See if these two guys differ. Oh yeah, these guys are really different. <clears throat> so it looks like population one and population three are different. Population two and population three are different. Population one and population three are the same <laughs> or something like that. Um, <clears throat> I will not ask you to do that uh, during any quiz or exam. The point I'm trying to make is that uh, <clears throat> the test itself just tells you uh, that there is some sort of uh, difference in the populations. Uh, it doesn't point out the, uh, the subtle detail. But that's really all I'll ask you to do uh, as far as the test goes. Tell me which of the means or uh, tell me uh, if you can reject that uh, um, null hypothesis or not. So, as I said, it was a fairly short presentation. We have introduced the ANOVA test. Uh, hello, ANOVA. And we conducted an ANOVA test. We actually did one and we compared those three population means. <clears throat> the uh, problems that you'll see um, look very similar to what you see right here. <clears throat> so if you can uh, handle the raw data handle the calculator subtlety, then you're going to go ahead and uh, you'll be just fine with this material. As I say, it's pretty straightforward. And if I can jump back one more screen or two, there we go. <clears throat> this data set really calls itself out also. It's uh, the only one we have that has three distinct samples. So uh, it's really uh, almost impossible to confuse this with anything else. But there we go. I'm going to stop my sharing there and um, ask if there are any questions. <clears throat> okay, I don't see any in the chat. I'm going to stop the recording. <clears throat>